What is up guys, I hope you're all doing great. In this video, like the title says, I'm going to be showing you how you can find and fix any of the things that aren't working correctly in your Unreal Engine 4 project. Yes, today we are covering debugging, and although you may think debugging is a boring topic, I'm about to teach you some skills which could save your projects. Before we start, a quick shout out to my Patreons for supporting me. Welcome Brian, welcome Carl, and welcome Dane to the team, and thank you guys so much for joining. Okay, without further ado, let's get into this. So there are two absolutely essential methods of debugging I want to show you guys today. The first being the message log slash compiler results, and the second being the most important node in the entire software, the print string. What you may not realize is that these tools are the kings of the software. Let's start with the message log slash compiler results. So these tools quite literally tell you what you've done wrong. This tool is insanely overpowered, and I think we all know it doesn't get the respect it deserves, so let me show you how to use it. Obviously, I can't go through every single error that might appear, but here's an example error that I get asked about a lot. So in our level blueprint, we're trying to set simulate physics to true for our actor reference variable. So we play our game, stop running our game, and we get this error. Access none trying to read property actor reference. So what can I take away from this? This says that we have a problem in our third person example map blueprint, aka our level blueprint. The problem is in our graph called event graph. The node that's generating the problem is the set simulate physics. And on the left here is the problem that's occurring. And what the problem is saying is that we are doing something with our actor reference variable, but it's empty. There is nothing stored inside the variable to use. So when you get an error, ignore everything apart from the error message and the node. Read the error carefully and then click on the node the error is in to be taken to the problem. From this point on, all you need to do is tweak your blueprint based on what the error says. For the error I've used, all we need to do is give the variable a value and it's fixed. Okay, that is just one of the king tools for debugging. Now what about the print string? So for those of you who don't know, the print string prints out a value and you can throw it in your program at any point. Now what you may not know is just how many ways this can be used. So let's go through some examples. So we can take any of our variables and plug it directly into the print string and it will print out the variable value. This is an amazing way of keeping track of what's stored inside variables or if bools are true or false. Okay, next example. Let's say you're working with two locations and you want to compare them or just generally keep track of both of them at the same time. So what we can do is use the append node to combine two strings together. We can plug a location into the second append slot and we can type out whose location it is in the first slot. Now when printed out, this will combine the two strings. If we do this for two actors, we can directly compare the two locations. A great tool for certain situations. So we can also use the print string to calculate maths for us so we don't need to think about it. I needed some maths to tell me when the AI and the character were facing each other for blocking attacks. So I did some quick maths and threw the result in a print string. The print string will print out the updated result of whatever maths you do. So the print string can quite literally do all the work for you and you can analyze the maths during gameplay. When doing a line trace, we can break the result, then we can plug the overlapping actor into a print string. This means whenever we fire off a line trace, our program will print out what actor we overlap with. So this next one is a bit of a lifesaver, and if you remember anything from this video, remember this one. We can use the print string to extremely easily narrow down where the error is coming from. Let's say we're picking up this sword, but it's not working. To find out where the error is, we can first throw a print string in the sword blueprint in the pickup event. So now when we play our level, if the print string fires off, it means the weapon is receiving the pickup event and the problem is in the weapon. If we don't trigger the print string, it means the weapon isn't receiving the trigger from the character and the problem is in the character. So just like that, we've narrowed down if the problem is coming from the character blueprint or in the weapon. We can then work our way up through the rest of the nodes with more print strings to narrow down where the problem is further. To demonstrate this, here's an example from my friend Free Comet who very kindly sent me his project to debug. So Free Comet has created a 2D side scroller and he's working with a switch. And he's wondering why when he fires a projectile, the switch changes, 
but it doesn't change with the melee attack. So, how do we go about fixing this? Well first, we need to narrow down where the problem is, and it can be in one of two places, the switch and the character. So let's narrow this down by adding a print string in the switch to see if the switch is receiving the call. And we can see the print string isn't triggering with a melee swing. This means the problem lies in the character, as the character is failing to trigger the event in the weapon. So let's check out the character blueprint. This overlap is the trigger for when the switch should change. So let's throw in a print string to see if it's triggering when we're overlapping the switch. Okay, so the overlap box isn't triggering. Let's check out the collision settings. So we can see the problem is in the collision settings as the collision box is set to ignore everything except the pawn. So if we quickly add a new overlap box and plug it into the trigger, we can see it's now working. So the fix to the project wasn't important. What I'm trying to show you is the steps you should take when you come across a problem yourselves. You can see by going through things sequentially, you can narrow down where the problem is occurring from until you find it, and then you can fix it. So, to sum everything up, to fix any of your blueprinting problems, use the message log to find and correct your error. If it's showing no errors, place print strings throughout your blueprint to find out what's working. By finding out what's working, you'll be able to narrow down what isn't working and then fix the problem. So guys, that's it for me. And I hope now you've got a solid understanding of how you can fix any of your issues. But regardless, feel free to ask me any questions in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.